once again, Happy Easter, and welcome to St. David's, both in person and virtually on Zoom and Facebook. I'm Daryl Butler, the Senior Warden, and 2023 around here is our year of connection. So before we start, please take a moment to wish a Happy Easter to someone near you, perhaps someone you do not even know. Happy Easter. <laughs> Easter is the pinnacle feast of the Christian year and our reminder of God's immense love for us. We will be hearing readings from a sermon and celebrating the first communion of Easter, to which you are welcome. No matter where you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome at our communion table. If you're joining us on Zoom, welcome. We're so glad you're here. You can find the morning's bulletin by following the link in the chat box. And if you would like to submit a prayer request, please do via the chat box. We are thrilled to welcome our special musicians today. Please feel free to ring your bells during the refrains of our hymns. Let us open our hearts to the joy of the spirit as we listen to our opening prelude. Thanks again for joining us. Hallelujah, Christ is risen.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to each one of us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy this day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson is from the Christian scriptures in the book of Acts, where we hear St. Peter proclaim Christ's salvation to both Jews and Gentiles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. May your word live in us. And bear much truth to your glory. Yeah. 
Uh, this is this stuff to work pretty good. Second lesson is from the Christian scriptures. That was a dinner stuff. Congregation of Christian now, and they were here. To whom he proclaims Christ's triumph over death. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all of people to be most pitied. But in fact, Christ has been risen, raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so we all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. May your word live in us. I bear my truth to your glory.
I was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home and amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. You know, working at this church, which is across the street from a liquor store, <laughs> that has a wide selection of candies, especially suckers. And having a four-year-old whose brother was once asked if he had a sweet tooth and replied, yeah, all of them. <laughs> this means that me and the four-year-old, we've become good friends with the owner of that liquor store. Now you may find it interesting that the four-year-old and I refer to that establishment as a liquor store, but I explained it this way, it's a place to buy suckers that you lick. <laughs> and he seems to be fine with that. Anyway, on the occasions that we go over to that liquor store, I also stand in line once and again for lottery tickets. I buy, often buy one for my wife and I buy one for the secretary. It's not because I want either one of them to leave, Although I can't deny that possibility. Uh, but it's because perhaps like you and me, I engage in that occasional what if kind of thinking. As I walk back from that liquor store, I wonder what would I do with $10 million? What debt would I pay off? What charity would I finance? How many people could I silence with that kind of hush one? <laughs> That's not veiled political commentary either. But as we know, winning the big lottery is an almost impossible long shot, but it is fun to think about. As the lotto advertisement says, somebody's got to win. And I wonder if that kind of imagining was what those first disciples were doing when Jesus died. Hey, Jesus said he was going to come back after three days. I wonder if that's going to happen. Will he rise from the dead? Now, I understand that that kind of thinking is considered blatant fantasy by a lot of science-minded people. Come on, how could anybody rise from the dead? How could it be possible? And we hear this even among Christians. Believing a human can literally be resurrected from the grave is far-fetched, perhaps something for the small-minded, the ill-informed, or the UFO slash InfoWars crowd. And the Christian story is based not on Jesus' good works, his marvelous teaching, or his sterling example. But on the Easter event, on the resurrection, of which St. Paul writes quite clearly, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is our faith. The resurrection is at the heart of it all. But to look at this Easter story is to also look at its impact. 2,000 years of history and Christianity becoming the biggest, the most influential religion the world's ever known that has founded more schools, more hospitals, <laughs> social service agencies, and influenced more philanthropists and charity groups than any other. We look at the pious lives of the saints. We look at the saints, the martyrs, and those who have given their lives to benefit the world, to benefit humanity. William Wilberforce, John Wesley, Mother Teresa, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a huge list of people primarily motivated by the reality of a living Christ in their midst, the resurrected Jesus. Now this says something really profound about this Easter miracle. And to look at the Easter story and its impact is to also look at ourselves, at the personal, at the intimate and all of the many, many stories that you and I have of otherworldly encounters, of personal interactions with the divine. Some of you may have heard me tell the story of one of our parishioners recently. She, as a young mom, she was working 
at the kitchen. She was at the kitchen sink looking out the window one day when she felt somebody tap on her shoulder. Now she turned around and, and there was a stranger in her kitchen and that stranger was pointing vigorously to the corner, to the corner, to the corner. And so my friend looked to the corner and she saw her little toddler taking a car key about to put it in the electrical outlet. And so she leapt to her feet, she leapt across the room and swept that little girl into her arms, then looked back to where that stranger was kept standing in her kitchen. And guess what? He was gone. <laughs> this story was told in the context of our lengthy presentations back in March. Some of you were there. The presenter, Jonathan, had asked the 25 or so of us gathered there if we'd ever had a personal experiential encounter that we credited to God or to Jesus. Arms shot up. Not everyone, but enough people to make you think. In fact, arms might shoot up here if the same question were posed. And so when we look at these things, the impact of the resurrection and the living Christ throughout history and the abundance of unexplainable otherworldly encounters that pervade, that exist, I wonder if it's not a stretch to say, as one theologian concluded, that on the first Easter morning, something indeed happened. And what I would like us to ponder, friends, this morning, amidst all of the varied and various baggage that we all brought in with us this morning, is that if something happened, anything can happen. If something happened, anything can happen. That's the title of this sermon, all compacted into a tweetable size. If something happened, anything can happen. Because Easter, let's face it, folks, it's about possibility. Easter is about hope. Easter is about not giving up on that dream, on that vision, on that project or that plan that we believe has come to us so that we can bring it into the world. Easter is about you and me acting as agents of possibility, acting as if resurrection is possible, that impossible things can be possible. It's about you and me putting to death apathy and indifference and the lackadaisical attitude toward persistent injustice that permeates our culture and leaving this place with a renewed sense of the possible. Because if something happened, anything can happen. Now, one of England's most beautiful cathedrals can be found in Salisbury, UK. I know a lot of you have been there before. It, it nearly casts a shadow on Stonehenge, and it still sports the tallest cathedral spire in all of England. Construction began in the year 1220. The spire was completed in the year 1320, and it was built kind of quickly by cathedral standards of the day. Many people thought it couldn't be done. And when you consider the technology, the geography, the craftsmanship, let alone the cost, the naysayers were aplenty. Workers spent their entire careers, their entire lives, chipping away at the stone. Most would die before the ribbon was ever cut. 100 years, par for the course when you build a cathedral. Many of the dreams you and I have are cathedral dreams, aspirations that may take a while for you and me to see the results. Putting an end to poverty, putting a stop to gun violence, arriving at racial equality, economic equality, gender equality, climate integrity. Then there are the personal cathedral dreams that you might have in your heart this morning. Healing relationships, reaching career goals, making peace with ailing bodies. Whatever your impossible dream is, friend, the Easter message encourages you and me to keep chipping away. Stay at it, renew your determination, because God is building a cathedral and it won't be what it's supposed to be without you and without me. Easter exudes possibility. If something happened, anything can happen. What is your cathedral dream? Is it that big? Is it much smaller? What has God's message been to you lately? When you're driving alone in the car, when your head's hitting the pillow and you're not quite asleep yet, what has the Lord been nudging you toward? That's good, that's righteous, that's life-giving. Today, we reflect on the possibility that the impossible is possible 
It's just because that's who God is. So as we sit down for a moment, friends, let's think about that this morning. Possibility, hope, that if something happened, anything can happen. Amen. 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 sent in from our Zoom chat box. Uh, prayers for Dee Bryant this morning, faithful parishioner for quite a long time. Let us pray. 
pray to the Lord. Once again, welcome to our Sunday service. Please join us immediately after church to celebrate the resurrection of the Jesus Cake. One of our members, a professional cake maker, has brought us the goods. This coincides with our annual Easter egg hunt on the back lawn, so stick around after the service. I need to get a little shorter, apparently. <laughs> also, today we launched the Easter season. We launched the Easter season and are making this our season of service. Each Sunday, we're challenging you to pick a service stick from the glass bowl that will be in the narthex. 
and in the coming week perform the task written on it. Examples include invite a friend to tea or coffee, invite someone for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, here I was. Or drive a friend to an appointment. Pick a new one each week, all during our season of service. It'll be on the table right in the not text back there. Also, we're very excited about our upcoming outreach to the homeless. We're cooking dinner all next week for the South Oakland Shelter guests. See the sign-up sheet in the Ministry Hub, which is out by the hallway in the atrium. Did you enjoy today's music? Join us next week for our 11.30 a.m. Connection Hour with our parish musician, Al Evans, who will give a presentation on the music of Easter. Join us. And in two weeks, we'll host Sister Veronica, who works for the Bishop on racial justice. And she'll be here to lead the book discussion of Colson Whitehead's The Underground Railroad in January. But if you haven't finished it yet, you've got two weeks. If you haven't started it yet, you've got two weeks. <laughs> Come join us at 11.30 on April 23rd. Finally, if you're new with us, stop by the Ministry Hub in the atrium. We want to give you a special gift and welcome you to our parish. Meanwhile, you can always keep up on announcements on the parish website. Happy Easter. Thank you, Steve, very much. Uh, I invite the, the ushers to come forward. This is the offertory. And uh, if you're joining us online, you can go to the St. David's website and click the donate button. Um, and if you're here, uh, thank you for your generosity. Your generosity is what keeps us open as a parish community, what keeps our food pantry going. Uh, what keeps all the varied and, and numbers, uh, numerous groups of people and 12 step programs for a place to come and to do their good work. Uh, so let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice.
Lord our God. slavery to freedom in the promised land, and you brought your sons from the depth of death to the glory of resurrection life. And so we gladly thank you with your people on earth and all the company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending praise. <laughs> Thank you. 
people of God, say to them remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.